There we go. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Um, let's, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you so much for this day. And I thank you for Pastor Vermey giving me the opportunity to speak in front of my congregation. I pray that this message will speak to just one person here, at the very least, just one person is all I ask, and that it speaks to them and really touches them and helps them in their daily life. I ask this in Jesus' holy mighty name. Amen. Amen. So, uh, to start, um, Otto, if you would be so kind, if you could put up Proverbs 11, verse 2, the NIV translation. When pride comes, then comes disgrace, but, but with humility comes wisdom. So, for the past month or so, I have been really learning about humility and that's something that seems very opposite of me. <laughs> I know when I speak up here or when I talk to people in a face-to-face -face conversation, I like to be very arrogant and very um, self-absorbed I can be. Although I know everyone loves it. <laughs> but I know, I know I can come across as that. <laughs> and, um, and for the past uh, month, I've been really learning humility and how to just humble myself. Because um, for, for like the past like three or four months prior to this month, I was getting really worldly. I was really just enjoying going out with friends, going to parties all the time, just hanging out, talking to girls all the time. And, and I, it's like that's my strong suit, so I was good at it. And so I didn't see anything wrong with it. And so this, this one day uh, in my travels, <laughs> One day in my really long, extravagant endeavors, I, I ran across this one girl, and I was, I was talking to her, and I was like, oh, you're so beautiful, you're gorgeous, you're like the sunrise, and, you're, <laughs> and I, I remember, <laughs> oh, wait, hold on, before I, before, I, before I start in this entire venture, I should apologize to Tito Nilo, because it's going to be kind of a long message. I might steal some of your time. <laughs> I'm sorry. I might take some of your time. But who doesn't enjoy me speaking anyway? Um, uh, no, I'll be humble. I'm sorry. You guys hate, you hate it when I speak. Um, so I was, I was talking with this girl, and I was, I was like flirting with her. And I was like, you're so beautiful. You're just radiant. Your personality is so brilliant. Make me want to be a better person. I was like, that's so no, no, it was that song. Um, and I remember I was talking to her for like a good like a week, and it's like I didn't get any response. I'm like, why aren't you falling in love with me? I was like, this, this happens to every girl. I was like, my charm is just there. I'm falling in love with me. Why, why, is, this not, why is this not happening to you? I'm like, what's going on? I'm like. I'm like, this isn't right. I'm like, this, this, is, this is like completely just blowing my mind. It's not working on you. And I remember she said something to me that really changed my perspective on things. And I remember uh, one day she's just like, Anthony, you can't tell me I'm beautiful. Only God can. And I was like, what? I'm like, what are you talking about? Of course I can tell you. And I was like, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. I started yelling at her. <laughs> But then I remember I was like, okay, okay, I'm going to have to change my game up. I'm not going to have to flirt with her. I'm going to have to be a better Christian for her. And so the next day I started praying a lot. And just the, and like the very next day after that, it was instant. God was like, Anthony, what you're doing is wrong. And he's like, don't do that. You know, if you want to have a real relationship with me, you cannot do that for her. And so uh, while I was reading my Bible... God kind of slapped me in the face and gave me Matthew 6, verse 1, the message version, where he said, Be especially careful when you're trying to get to be good so that you don't make a performance out of it. It might be good theater, but the God who made you won't be applauding. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, God, why do you have to be that God? I know this is for me. I know you're talking right to me when you gave me this. And so I, I, knew, I knew I had to change my ways. And so I started genuinely um, seeking after God. I started really like praying and doing my Bible study. And I remember at a point in time, God pressed on my heart, really. He's like, 
you need to apologize to her because what you're doing was wrong. And so I went up to her or, and I said, I'm sorry. I was like, I know you probably didn't like how I was acting at that time. I know you didn't like me flirting with you and I'm sorry. I, I have no idea what she thinks of me, but I apologize to her. And, um, and that really, that was a humbling moment for me. And <laughs> it, was, it was. I've never apologized for flirting with someone. <laughs> it made me feel amazing. <laughs> and um, that wasn't even the bulk of the message yet. Uh, um, that wasn't even my main story. Um, after that, I started really like encountering, God started like really, I knew God was saying, I'm going to start humbling you, Anthony. I'm going to start putting you in situations where I'm going to humiliate you because it's pretty much, that's what humili um, humility is. That's the base word, humiliate. And so there, uh, a few weeks ago, I went to Oregon and I went to um, this, this guy's um, wedding. I was invited. Um, well, actually, it's my friend's boss but I was his plus one, and he's like, do you want to go to Oregon? I'm like, oh, that sounds awesome. I've never been there. Um, and so I, I went to Oregon, and when I was there, I got off the plane, and uh, the groom, he picked us up, and I was really tired because I hadn't slept the night before, and so I was just laying in the back, and I was like getting in this nice, warm, like sleepy mode while my friend was talking to him, and I remember he was talking about like what we're going to do for the night, and I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to get our little itinerary for the night. I was sitting in the back sleep or in the back seat, I was starting to like fall asleep. Well, my friend was talking with him, and um, like I was just like, "Oh, we're gonna go out to eat. We're gonna go to this really famous steakhouse. We're gonna go out to like a pool house. We're gonna just have a lot of fun tonight." I rented this um, uh, this party bus. We're gonna have a lot of fun. I got all my bros coming. I have like ten guys, and they're they're really really bros. They're like buff and blonde. It was they're. It was um, but that was the bad part because I, I, was, I was lying there I was like oh this sounds like such a good evening and I was falling asleep my head was going down and he's like and then after all that from 10 until 2 in the morning we're going to every single strip club in Oregon and I was like what? I was like I can't do that I was like I can't do that that's wrong I was like even I have my moral compass and I know that that's terrible I can't do that and like my eyes shot open and I was like I can't do that but I'm in this, I was in this really awkward position where I was like, I don't want to be that condescending Christian where I'm like, I'm a Christian, this is wrong, you guys shouldn't be doing this. I was like, I was a guest in his house, I was invited to Oregon, it was his wedding, it was his bachelor night, I was like, I can't, I can't do that, I can't just be like, what I think you're doing is wrong, although I did think that, but I was like, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this, what am I going to do? And so I was like praying, so I was like panicking in my head. I was like, oh God, I, right now I really need you to intervene somehow. I need you to do something to get me out of this because I can't go to this because I was like, I'm really starting to really connect with you. I'm really like starting to humble myself. I just got enrolled in this program in Pi Hop, which I did. It's amazing. And I was like, oh, everything's going so good right now. Why is this happening right now? And so um, uh, this entire day went by. It's like nothing happened. I was praying like the entire day consistently. But it's like, well, no one knew I was freaking out. I was playing a, I had a really cool demeanor. I was like, oh no, this is going to be awesome tonight. I'm like, we're going to like, see a bunch of naked women. This is going to be so cool, bros. And I was just like panicking inside. I was like, how oh, am I going to get out of this? And so the time came where it's like, we, we like drove up in this giant party bus with like 12 guys. And we get to this strip club called uh, Club 205. I'm like, oh, God, can't you just bring, like, a flaming sword down and just break this building or something? <laughs> like, can't you do something to get out of this? I'm like, what am I going to do? I, I, can't, I can't just be like, I can't do this, I can't do this, I'm sorry, I just run away. It would be weird. And I didn't want to, like, destroy his night. I just, I, I wanted to, I want to be supportive, but I didn't want to destroy anything because it was his night, he was getting married. It's a weird thing to do if you're getting married. Um, so, I remember... We were, we were waiting outside, and you could hear this loud thumping, this <laughs> coming from the inside, and I was like, ugh. It was like this heartbeat just pounding inside me. I was like, I can't go in there. I'm like, what am I going to do? And so uh, there's this bouncer, and he's like checking IDs. Like, we were each giving one. I was like, I can't go in. And I remember, it's like, I, I stepped in. I was blessed because there was just a bar there to start, and so I just walked in this bar, and when I, as soon as I walked in, I got this overwhelming feeling of sadness. I was like, oh, 
I hated it here. It's so bad. And so I was like, I need to get out of here. So I was in this bar area, and then there's this little, like, gigantic curtain where you could go into that, the main area. And so I walked into the bar, and I was like, how am I going to get out of this? I was like, I can't, I can't do anything. So I sat at the bar, and I'm like, I know. I'm like, I'm just going to, I'll order something to drink to start. And so I ordered a drink, and I remember, it was an alcoholic drink. Uh, and then I remember I sipped it. And it's like, second I took a small sip, I gagged. I was like, oh, I was like, oh, this is terrible. And it's like back in my worldly phase, I could drink these before, but now I was like, I can't. God, you like took this away from me. And so I sipped, and I was like, oh, this is terrible. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, I'm, feeling to I'm feeling horrible. It's like the bartender saw me. She's like, are you okay? And I was like, I hope so. And so I remember at that moment, I was like, I know what I have to do. I know what I have to do. And so I called this guy over to me. His name was Marco. And I was like, bro, let me get you a drink. And so I ordered him a drink. And we were there. I'm like, all right, let's drink this together. I was like, to a good night. I was like, cheers. And so I drank it down. And these tears were going down my eyes. And I was choking it down. And I like slammed his glass down. I was like, Ugh. And then it's like threw up everywhere. And I was like, oh, this projectile out for me. And I threw up and then he's like, oh bro, are you alright? I'm like, yeah, I'm just gonna go sleep this off in the car. And he's like, alright, dude, take care of yourself, seriously. And so I left. <laughs> and that's how I got out of that. <laughs> and, but that wasn't that wasn't the important part of that, ironically. When I left there, I went to our party bus, and our driver, it was a very, it's a very long story, but our driver was the groom's mom, and so I remember I was sitting in the car, and I started talking to her for four hours, because they went to like four strip clubs, and so I talked to her between each one, I just stayed in the car the entire time, and so I was talking to her, she started just talking to me, and she started making a lot of jokes. She got really comfortable with me really quick, and she started really just opening up to me. She started venting. She started like, crying. And I remember at the end of the night, she was like, Anthony, thank you so much for listening to me. And it's like the entire time, not once did I say, oh, I'm a Christian. Talk to me. Never once did I say that. I was just, I was just a friendly face. I think I have a friendly face. And so I, was, I just talked to her the entire night. She's like, thank you so much for just listening to me, Anthony. Thank you so much for just being there. I was like, I didn't even know I needed that. And I was like, I was like, no, don't thank me. I was like, you're amazing for doing all this. Honestly, I was like, I, I, if I had a son, I wouldn't let him do this, but you are truly amazing for taking him everywhere and driving him around. And she was just like, thank you so much. And she was really genuine about it. And she was really like tearing up. But in that moment, I learned just, like, we don't have to, as Christians, we don't have to go around saying, like, oh, I'm a Christian, oh, I'm, like, better than everyone, you can talk to me because I know what's right. No, it's like, there's a lot, there's a lot of times where we actually should step down from that position of being on a pedestal as a Christian and just talk to people. And it's like, uh, Jesus inside of us will come out and he will affect them. If you could put up... Um, uh, Whatever the verse I gave you. <laughs> there you go. If, you got, if you've gotten anything at all out of following Christ, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in, in a community of the Spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, you go to the next one, then do me a favor. Agree with each other. Love each other. Be deep-spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet-talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead.